All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be working on this 6.5 liter diesel. And what I'm going to be doing is remotely mounting the pump mounted driver, also known as the fuel solenoid driver. It's really not something you come across much here in 2024, something you would have seen maybe 20 years ago, but you will run into it if you get a rebuilt injection pump and the modules in the stock position after doing that. So let's pull the cover off here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now these covers don't cause any problems. So, you know, if you have somebody thinking that leaving the cover on here contributes to those things failing, that's old, an old wives tale or fake news. It doesn't have anything to do with them. They fail because of their own design more than anything else. So we're gonna reposition it so you guys can see better because I gotta get further up on top here, but we're gonna be looking right down here with a flashlight. I'll show you the pump and I'll show you what we're gonna do to remotely mount it and why we're gonna have to do that. All right, guys, looking up on top here, you know, you've got your upper intake here. You've got your upper radiator hose here. And looking down in between those two, you can see the pump-mounted driver. In fact, on this GM one right there, you can see a, a little splot of black epoxy, and that's why we're doing this. Um, this is an injection pump that was rebuilt by AC Delco. They put these little splotches on the top and the bottom to tell if you've removed this driver and it'll void your warranty. So you have to leave this in the stock position. This will be true for um, Standardine rebuilt ones, Alliant Power type rebuilt ones. Typically any of the OE types are gonna require you to leave this in the stock position or void the warranty. So how can we give ourselves some reliability when these things fail and not void the warranty? That's what today's video is about. First, we gotta get this guy disconnected, the wiring harness. Can't really see it really well here. You can see the ground wire if you zoom in. That small wire right there is the ground wire. And that's going to the connector that you can see right there kind of in the lower right corner. A little bit of blue on it from the weather, the, uh, weather pack uh, insulator. Let me give you a view on the side. And that's where you're going to have to come in to disconnect this. All right, guys. From the side, right where you see the blue, let's see if we can zoom in the camera here. Right there's your connector. I'm not sure why the camera doesn't want to focus on it, but it's right behind that bolt and nut that you see with the, the blue on it. So you'll have to stick your finger in there to unplug it. I'm not going to be able to get in here with the camera in my hand. There won't be anything to see, but that's how you get in and access the plug. All right, guys, just trying to show you a close-up here. We're going to come in here with a screwdriver in order to pop the clip off so that we can get the connector disconnected. Obviously can't show you in there because I gotta put my hand in there and that's the only place you can see in. But we're gonna use a long screwdriver to help us lift the clip up while we gently push it back. All right guys, I'll show you um, unplugging this uh, after we get it unplugged, pulling it out. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna put a couple of these small extensions on. Now this is the one for the black type of Stanodyne or aftermarket. You see it's got like a half moon shape. Let me pull this sticker off, get it behind here. You can see better. All right, so you can see it's like a half moon shape on the corner here and on the corner here. So this only fits the original black colored Stanodynes or the aftermarket ones that were designed by Flight Systems that are actually the ones that GM uses now. If you've got the gray Stanodyne, it has a different connector and it's going to look like this. If you zoom in here, right, you can see it's got like a a small notch on this side and a larger notch on this side. It doesn't have the half moon style. But what we're going to do with these short ones is we're going to plug one of these into the harness on the injection pump. And we're going to plug the other one into the pump mounted PMD. And then we're going to plug them together. And that's going to be the setup that we run until the one on the pump dies. But we're also today going to run an extension to a backup module that's going to be mounted in the front bumper and that's the one we'll switch to by unplugging these when the pump mounted one dies. So let me show you getting these guys hooked up. All right guys after you get it unhooked um, the two tools I'm using here are a couple of picks. This pick with a hook on it is crucial 
because you can kind of hook the latch and, and get it pulled up here. And then the 90 degree pick is, is great for getting behind it and pulling against it. It also can be a backup tool if you can't get a screwdriver that's long enough and small enough to fit on this latch. You can come in for where I showed you earlier with this 90 degree pick and you can pull that latch back that way too. All right, so now we've got this guy to where we can access him. Now we can connect the first extension harness. So if he just stays put for a moment. Come over here, get the extension harness. And what I'm gonna do on this guy is I'm just gonna put a little bit of dielectric grease. It's AC Delco dielectric grease. Just gonna put a little bit of that on the inside. It's just a water prevention, water intrusion prevention action. And this is exactly um, what Stanodyne would have had you done when you're mounting this connector directly to one of their modules. Now when you're getting these guys to connect, you want to make sure that this blue weather stripping goes all the way in. Sometimes it binds up. Part of how these things can die is fretting on the connectors. So we definitely don't want any moisture intrusion. So the back here, right, it's binding up on the back so we're not getting it to seal properly. If it keeps giving us a hard time, we'll give it a spray with some silicone to help it slide together. But you definitely don't want it bound up. All right. I did not hear a satisfying click out of that, so we're going to do it one more time. There we go. So I only see a very small shade of blue. That's what I want. Now I can take the stress off of this connector, this harness rather. I'm pushing back down to where he's happy inside here because we're not going to do anything more with him. I'm going to run this guy over here. Now the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the second one and we're going to get him routed up inside and plugged into the pump. That's a little harder, but it's still doable. But I can't get that on the camera. So that's the next thing we're going to go do. I'm going to go ahead, though, while I got this set up, I can go ahead and put some dielectric on this guy. And we can go ahead and connect these two together as well. Just work them together. Again, we don't want the weather stripping binding. There we go. Much nicer click. All right, so now we just got to get this connected to the pump. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us our tap in point when it fails for the extension harness to the bumper. All right, guys, now we need to put the other end of this harness in. You can see I uh, come in here with a wooden dowel here, move this fuel line out of the way. And we got plenty of room to get in there. Can't get our fingers in there, but we can get this piece of harness in there. So we're going to come back over. We've already put some dielectric on it. And what I want to do is I want to get this guy in with the end of it kind of got a curve to it and pushed up. So I'm going to have to shut the light off on you because i got to push this fuel hose back. And then I'm going to use this wooden stick to push the harness end in first, just like that. Alright, let's bring some light back on here because I don't know if you guys can see. Alright, so we got it pushed up like that. Now, I'm just going to continue to work him down. And the reason we're using something wooden is so that we don't damage anything, right? I'm just going to nudge him down there. Right now, he's laying right on top of the PMD connector, and then you just pop past. Now, let's go look at it from the side. All right, guys, if we zoom in from the side of the intake manifold here, there's our plug just laying there in between these two uh, fuel lines going to the injectors and that's what we got to go grab. Now you can't get your finger in there so you can either you know use a couple of picks or a screwdriver or something like that but I'm going to show you uh, a technique that I think is a little bit faster because we got to we got to get this where we can grab it so we can line it up to push it into the PMD's connector. We got to get this plug 
to where we can grasp it. So let me show you what I'm going to do for that. All right, so this is the harness we're going to put in once we get this short one plugged in. Uh, this is the one that's going to run to the front bumper, but I can't get you in there to show what I'm going to do, so we'll use this to illustrate. So I'm going to take a tool like this, a grabber tool, right? This is one of these kind of tools where if you give it a squeeze on the end, it opens up these little jaws, right? And so we're going to come in from the side where that intake manifold opening is, and we're going to come in and grasp the latch, just like you see me doing right here. So that we can get a hold of this plug and manipulate it where we need it to go. So that's how we're going to go plug this guy in. All right, guys, just a quick shot. We've got the plug lined up with the connector. Having some trouble getting the camera to focus on that, but hopefully you guys can see that. And now we're just going to go in from the top behind with a pick, and we're going to. All right, guys, we've got this uh, latched in here. Just zoom in here. You can see the latch is secure, and we have no binding on the weather pack. So let's move on to the front bumper harness now. All right, with that done, the engine's runnable now, and we've got a connection back to the pump-mounted driver. So now we got to do the front bumper harness. So before I show you that, let me show you what I ended up having to do um, to get this to push in. So, you know, we were able to grab it and get it lined up uh, with the PMD on the pump, but we couldn't get enough force behind it. So I actually just took a piece of an old coat hanger rod just so that we could um, get right behind here and we had enough force to get it to latch. This way we were able to go top and bottom, top and bottom, and then finally in the middle and drive it home so that this didn't bind up like you saw in the previous clip. Um, the grabber's great for getting it where you need to line up, but it doesn't have enough, um, you know, it's flexible, so it doesn't give you any way to push it in. And what I found on the Suburban anyway is you couldn't get the screwdriver uh, anywhere but the middle and that would have caused this to bind up we needed to be able to rock it so that's why we made this little improvised tool all right so just like with the small shorter extension harness these are keyed right so like i showed earlier this half moon style on either side is for the original black standardine pmd or the one aftermarket design that came out from flight systems uh, flight systems got bought out by dorman a few years ago so that's really the only other version that comes in black and if you're using the gray type of pmd from standardine again it's got this kind of connector with this small notch on one side and this wide notch on the other you got to keep the connector for what you're using unless you're going to dork it up and, and modify it. And of course, you can't do that on the one on the pump or you'll avoid the warranty. It's the whole reason why we're doing things like we're doing today. So now we're going to go run this extension harness. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to, we're using the black type because we got a, a genuine GM one and that's what they use. I'm just going to run a bag over the top of this so we don't shove any crud or crap into the terminals while we route this down into the front bumper and I'll show you the routing as soon as we find the right place for it. Alright guys, we're going to remove these two 15 millimeter bolts that are securing this service cover at the front of the vehicle. Actually before I pull this one out, if we follow this plastic cover all the way back to the top here we can see where two of the cooler lines are going in right here. This is where we're going to route the extension harness that will give us access to the front bumper nostril. So anyway, back to this bolt. We pull this guy off. And now we can open up the access cover. There's our harness that we shoved down here. And now we're going to work him up right past this oil cooler line, which will be our next project because it's leaking. We just need to push it in enough where we can come and grab it from the other side. Alright, now let's go to the front of the bumper. Alright, so we're in the front driver's side nostril on the bumper. Here's our extension harness that we push through from underneath. Now we've got it out where we can work on it and we're going to do the last step here which is actually mounting the second backup PMD on a heat sink here in the front. So let me get those parts and show you that and then we'll wrap it up. All right PMDs. So I've got two new ones here depending on what kind of vehicle we're working on or rather what kind is on the vehicle we're working on. So this is an Alliant Power AP63486. 
Stanodyne is what's inside here, but Stanodyne quit making these at least five years ago. I want to say 2015. It's the Stanodyne 39405. So Stanodyne exited this 6.5 liter diesel business and they sold all of their parts to these guys, Alliant Power. And so everything you're buying from these guys is just new old stock Stanodyne stuff. They've been out of production for a while. So this is the gray PMD. So if you have this for your extra one, you should get a package like this with a thermal pad, with a pack of dielectric grease, and four new screws, all genuine standardine parts. And then there will be a little instruction sheet in here that talks about installing all of this. And they talk about that you're going to go 15 to 25 inch pounds on the mounting screws for these. And, of course, whether you're putting it on the pump or you're putting on a remote heat sink like I'm going to show you today, you're going to use that same um, torque value. They tell you to put the lubricant that's included, the dielectric, onto the terminal studs on the fuel control solenoid in here. Now, you can't reach that unless you take apart the upper intake. Um, so we're not going to do that. Hopefully, the person that rebuilt the uh, injection pump took care of that for us. But we are going to apply the connector lubricant to both the wiring harness connectors, just like we did with the small ones. So that's what you get with the Stanodyne product. Now, like I mentioned before, GM stopped using the Stanodynes when they went from black to gray, and they went with the aftermarket version from Flight Systems. And Flight Systems is, is gone now, too. They sold out to uh, Dorman. So Flight Systems was an aviation company. They had a division called, I think, DTEC that did diesel engine stuff. And so here's what we're going to put on here, which is a white label version of a Dorman 904-104XD made in the USA. You get four screws with this guy. Wiggle them out here. Get a thermal pad with this guy. And then you get a new black PMD that's just generic without any... Uh, logos on it. So it doesn't say dormant anywhere on it. They still use these thermal pads for the transistors where standard I dropped them. And then you can always identify this aftermarket version by this kind of notch to the top cover. You'll see that on the genuine GM ones now too because they use this brand. And then the only instructions we get on this guy is it tells us, well, this is kind of old. They used to have too short and too long. The two short ones went here and the two long ones went here. But lately, they are all the same length, probably to save money. And their torque value is 20 inch pounds. So this is the guy we're going to be going with. So let's get our screws ready here. You're going to be using a heat sink like this. You want to have something that's purpose built for this. And I'm going to be, you can see where I've sanded it down to make it have as polished of a sheen as you can to mate between this thermal pad and the actual driver. Pull this pad out. We're just going to put this guy right here. And we're going to put this guy right here. And then we're going to work these screws in so that they're not cutting into the pad. Just want to get them started by hand. So we might have to hunt around for it for a minute. Once you get one of them started in each corner, you'll be fine. There we go. This pad's very fragile, so you want to be careful with it. All right, so now we can get this guy started. So we get a few of those threads going. Then we can do one in the opposite corner down here. Felt the threads catch. Yep. And then we'll just do the other two the same way. And I guess, you know, with them being longer screws, they're just going to go in further, but it's probably an acknowledgement that most people are mounting them to a heat sink like this and not mounting them onto the pump anymore. 
Although, of course, if you're rebuilding a pump, you would be doing that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run these down. You guys don't need to get bored out watching that. We'll come back and we'll torque them up. All right, so 20 inch pounds, and I want to point out something else. I got one of these old ones here. The standardines are going to use a T15 Torx type head on their fasteners, on these cap screws. But the cap screws on the aftermarket ones are going to be a 764th Allen type. So just keep that in mind. And again, uh, 20 inch pounds on this guy. All right, so with that in place, we now got to put a calibration resistor inside. Now I'm just going to install that. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. If you want detail on that, I'll link an older video I did up here in the upper right. But I'll just show you the difference here. So we're going to go with a number five. You're going to match whatever was in the pump on the, uh, excuse me, whatever was in the PMD mount on the pump. But here's a number five that fits this black standard iron aftermarket type. You can see the little five right there if you zoom in. So, and again, you know, that half moon shape like we saw on the connectors. And then for comparison, I'll just lay down here. This is a number five for a standardine gray type pump. So again, you can see it says five on it, and then it has just this keyway on this side and flat on this side. So and that's the difference in the resistors. Go ahead and put our number five in for this. And all we're going to do on that is we take a look at the top. You can see there's where our half moon shapes are. And this guy's just going to fit in just like that. We're going to take some dielectric grease, just like we used when we were using this uh, AC Delco 10464 or GM 1234 5579, just like we used on the small harnesses. We're going to come back over on this connector over here. It needs it here even more so than what we did under the hood, of course, because this is going to be more exposed to the elements. But all dielectric does is help protect from water intrusion. And then we're going to use the connector to actually push the resistor in. Again, same deal where we want to make sure that our weather pack seal is not binding up. All right, that looks good. Now we're going to pop it out, make sure that our resistor went in okay. There he is, all the way down at the bottom. All right, so now we can just snap her on. All right, I don't like how that went on. Feels like something's binding up. Yeah, I guess not, looks okay. Just like sometimes they click, sometimes they don't. I like them when they click, this one didn't. All right, what now? Now what we're gonna do, again, since this is in an exposed area, we're gonna do a little bit more weather protection. I'm gonna go apply some GE clear silicone. What I'm going to do with this, I'm going to cut this off. There's a new pack here. I'm going to cut this off here. I'm going to run it all the way around the perimeter of the thermal pad seal, and then I'm going to run it on top of each of the screws. So let me go cop that off there, and then we'll install that. All right, let's fill this guy up. Fill this guy up so they don't rust out on us and let water creep down from here and you get any rust jacking from underneath. And run it over here. All of this I'm doing is optional guys, but Don't want the owner to have this problem crap out on them for a long time. These eventually fail no matter what you do. I don't care if you get the black type or the gray type, they'll fail. It'll last on the pump, in my experience, anywhere from six months to 14, 15 months. It'll last down here anywhere from 12, 13 months to 18, 24 months. I've never seen one last three years. They always die. You got to treat it just like a brake rotor. It's a disposable commodity. 
on these engines. This thing is going to burn out at some point, and you're going to be replacing it. All right, now we're going to take on the front here on the license plate holder. We're going to take off with a 10 millimeter. We're going to take off just this bolt on this side. Gonna loosen it up. And then while this guy's drying, let's see if we can come back here. An adjustable wrench and hold the nut on the other side of this guy. If I can grab it. There we go. Now that's on tighter than I was expecting. Take this original 10 millimeter bolt and nut. And then what we're going to do when you get the um, heat sink, it'll come with a mounting bolt. So we're going to run this guy through there. And I'm going to have to get in you guys' way for just a moment but I'll show you what we're going to be doing. So we're going to run this bolt through here and it's got a plain washer on it and then what I like to do is stick one of these inserts in here. It's going to be giving us a spacer between the fins and the bumper. So get that on and then I'm going to have to get in your way for just a second and I'm going to run this bolt through the heat sink. All right, let's see if we can get some light in here now so you guys can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to run a plain washer on that bolt. Now that I've run it through the heat sink, I'm going to run a lock washer on that bolt. I'm going to run a 1 quarter 20 wing nut. So that wing nut's easier to get on and off without tools. You end up having to pull this out on the side of the road. Just got to feel my way to thread it on here. There we go. All right, you reach your hand through on the other side of the nostril. You can hold this whole heat sink into position while you tighten this guy up. Right, just like that. There's no torque value on this because this is just something we're doing aftermarket. And it's just necessary to do this kind of aftermarket thing given how often this particular component is going to fail. Put a 10 millimeter back up here to hold it. And just tighten it. Hand tight. And that is it. We're done. Now what we're going to do, I'm just going to reach over on this other side and make sure it's not moving around too much. Now what we're going to do is we're going to zip tie the harness as we walk our way back to the top. So we're not going to use any zip ties here, but we're going to do some on the bottom. So let's go look at that. All right, just a quick look here with the mirror, guys, so you can see what it looks like inside. If we zoom in and just kind of fill the mirror up. All right, so there's the box, the wing nut. There's how it sits against the inside of the bumper. And then if I can get you up on top there, there's our top connector, right? So nothing bound up in between any of these rails, nothing bound up on the bumper area so you don't have any chaffing going on with the harness. All right, down below we're just going to do one. We're going to hold it to one of these oil coolers, oil cooling lines. A 
not going to make these very tight. Just want to keep it from moving around, and getting cut on something or caught on anything. And with that, we can close this and we can put the two 15 millimeter bolts back in. Just snug them up since it's plastic. We don't need to torque something like this. It'll just damage the plastic. Now let's go up on top. All right, guys. So coming out from under there, we routed it under the metal power steering lines just to make sure that it didn't have any chance to ever get up near the fan serpentine belt. And we routed it under these lines. And then we pop up over here on the other side of the radiator. We're going to go ahead and do another zip tie to this negative ground cable to the battery. We're not putting these on very tight. Just trying to hold it in place. And then the last zip tie is right up on top here where we've zip tied it right next to the other connectors we were working on earlier. So the setup we've got is going to allow us to run with the original PMD that was put on when the pump was remanufactured and we'll be able to run that through the warranty period. If we have any problem with this pump, the owner brings it back to me. I remove these extension harnesses. We plug back the original harness in the same way we plugged in the extension harness, and we do the warranty claim on the pump. No problemo. If the pump runs out its natural life and dies after the warranty, we unplug the connector here. And then you can see we've got a dummy connector. This is just an old connector that's been cut off an old harness to keep dirt and crud out of the extension connect harness. We just swap these two. We put the dummy one on here and we put the live one onto the extension and then we're going to pick up and start running with the one in the bumper. We just leave the one up here dead on the pump when it reaches that point in its life. At that point we just go through a normal cycle of swapping out the one in the bumper whenever it fails and we'll keep a spare for that too. So we're just going to tuck all this stuff down and out of the way so we can put our cover back on. Again, having the cover back on doesn't have anything at all to do with the lifespan on these pump mounted drivers. You could put one of these damn things in a refrigerator and it would still fail. I guarantee you. It's just the design and the cycling of the heat. The device itself generates heat and then it's also exposed to heat. But that thermal cycling that it can do all by itself from its normal operation is enough over time to get it to a failure point. I've got another video I linked up on here how you can rebuild these PMDs. That's another option as well. But uh, this one is just about how you can set up remote and still keep your warranty on your pump. If you got comments or feedback on how you do this differently, appreciate seeing it below. If you got a question, I'll try to answer it below. If this helps you get your setup in a, in a way where you can keep having the warranty and still have the safety of being able to have a backup PMD, pay it forward, hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.